Okay. Um, so let's uh, restart. Um, today I'm going to present our work, Devising Recommendation with Personal Probability. And uh, first, uh, let me give you some uh, introduction about recommendation. So actually, uh, in our daily life, we, we will use a uh, recommendation system every day. So we use YouTube, TikTok, uh, Amazon. They will recommend some related contents to us. Uh, but in the recommendation system, we know that uh, some, some items are more popular. And so for example, uh, here, here, the iPhone here. Uh, in, in these figures, we can see that there are 10 users and the iPhone has interacted with, uh, has been interacted with uh, nine users. So actually this iPhone is more uh, popular than the other uh, items. Okay. Um. So uh, then there is a question how we measure the popular popularity of an item. So following the existing literature here, uh, we just use the number of users who interacted with this item, then divided the number of users. So for example, uh, here, the iPhone, the popularity of this iPhone should be 9 over 10 and equal to 0 0.9. But we find that in a recommendation system, there is a very uh, popular. Uh, th there is a very popular phenomenon. We call it popularity bias. That means the recommendation systems usually over recommend some popular items. So here uh, we did an experiment. Here the head items just means the top ten percent most popular items, and we did an experiment on the uh, movie lens data sets. So we find that in the movie lens data sets, the training set here, around 50% uh, of interactions are interactions with head items. So that means that the top 10% items uh, takes up the around a half of interactions in the data set. And then we use these data sets to train two well-known recommendation models, matrix factorizations, we call it MF, and LIGCM. And after that, after we train these models, we use these models to recommend uh, 15 items to each user. And we find that in the uh, recommendation results, for MF model, for the, there are around 67% of recommendations are head items. And for a light GCN, uh, it'd be, uh, the, uh, it, the, the recommendations of popular items uh, we, we have increased. It's around 74% uh, 70, uh, of uh, recommendations are head, uh, are head items. So this is popularity bias. The recommendation models will over recommend popular items. But popular, popularity items with very harmful to recommend their systems. So first, it will, rec uh, it will hurt user experience, uh, and it's also un uh, unfair to item providers, especially for long-tail item providers. Because for each user, they, they, what they see, the, what the, the recommendation they, they saw is uh, become uh, heterogeneous, uh, become homogeneous. Um, more and more uh, recommendations are popular items. And also, uh, because recommendation is a loop, the users will generate data, and the data will be used to update the recommendation models, and the recommendation models will recommend more items to users. So this is a loop. And during this, in this loop, the popularity bias will be uh, more serious. So it will cause the, the mature effect, the richer get richer. So we must to mitigate popularity bias. Then this is a, a key question that our paper has uh, need to solve. Uh, and uh, how do we do? So here, the intuition of our paper is that we think that the popularity bias what the will cause less personalization of recommendations, because for most of uh, users, the the recommendations to them are popular items. So actually, it will cause the personalizations of recommendations become less. So in our paper, what we do is 
we explicitly enhance the personalization of recommendations so, so that we can uh, handle the popularity bias. Then there is a question, how to make recommendations more personalized? So here, we actually, at first, we should know for each individual users what items they may like. And therefore, we propose a new measure, personal popularity. We also call it PP. So, and uh, this, this slide uh, shows that the, the, some uh, uh, attributes of our PP. PP considers item uh, popularity from a personal perspective. Here, PP is defined as the proportions of similar users who have interacted with an item. So this, uh, compared with the popularity we introduced before, the popularity we introduced before actually is the proportions of all users who has interacted with, with an item. But for our PP, uh, this is first, this is user uh, is a user aware measure. And also, uh, it considers the user's uh, interest. The definitions of our similar users is uh, uh, are the users with similar interests. So you can see in these examples, the Alice has uh, interacted with a an laptop and an, uh, uh, and an AirPods, and Bob has interacted with an iPhone and an AirPods. Uh, so actually, in these figures, in these examples, we, we know that definitely we know that Alice and Bob are similar users. So. So compared with uh, PP without the, the uh, popularity we mentioned before, actually the difference is that we changed the all users to similar users. Actually here we think that uh, using our PP can uh, uh, show the uh, individual interest of users. And this figure also shows the difference between uh, the popularity we introduced before and our PP. Because we think that the uh, the popularity we uh, introduced before is defined as uh, from a global perspective, it considers uh, the items from uh, uh, the from all users. So we also call the popularity uh, in the existing literature literatures as a global popularity. We also call it GP. So here in this work, we also call popularity bias as a GP bias in our uh, later introduction. And how to define the, the PP? In our paper, we just use a uh, very uh, simple definitions. Uh, here, we just use the jacquard similarity of their interacted item uh, set. The jacquard similarity, you can see that th this is the number of set interactions divided the number of set unions. And here, in these examples, we can see that the Alice and Jobs, their similarity is one over three. And for the similar users, we just use the users with the top K user as the top K users with the highest user similarity to him. So in this is the definitions of uh, similar users in our paper, but we, we think that it can also be used, be replaced by other, uh, by other methods if you have more uh, information about users and items. And then after introduce our PP here, then how we leverage PP in recommendations to handle popularity bias? This is another question. And in our paper, we, pro we propose a new framework, a uh, personal popularity aware counterfactual framework. We also call it PPAC framework here. And our PPAC framework is, uh, it can integrate PP and GP in recommendation. And also this is a model agnostic uh, framework and it can be applied in any recommendation models. So compare uh, PPAC with the existing work, what, what's the difference? Uh, so actually we know that the uh, traditional recommendation models such like uh, MF and Legacy that we introduced before, they leverage user and item representations to conduct uh, rec uh, recommendations. So here in this cultural graph, uh, we know that there are some uh, user embeddings and item embeddings, and we use these embeddings to generate a prediction scores, which indicates the probability that these users may like this item. 
And for some existing uh, debugging work, such like PTA and MACL, actually, they only consider the GP, the probability that we introduced before, and they adjust the effect of GP in the recommendations to handle the bias. Uh, but in our work, uh, we argue that both PP and GP can direct affect the recommendations, and this is a, a real world recommendation scenarios. So, uh, actually, in our work, what we do is that we use some uh, we use the counterfactual uh, inference techniques to adjust the effects of PP to S and GP to S to mitigate the uh, GP bias. So. As we introduced before, actually PP can uh, increase the 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 person uh, uh, personalization of recommendations. So actually, here what we do is uh, increase the effects of PP to S and decrease the effect uh, of GP to S to mitigate the probability bias here. And uh, then uh, we let me introduce the framework overview. Uh, actually, we have some uh, uh, some formula derivations in our paper, but uh, actually it seems too uh, technical. So I didn't put the the some formula here. We just uh, uh, introduced the the simple ideas of our work. So here we have uh, the uh, users and items, and we have a, a personal probability model. This model is to predict the PP, and we also have a model to predict GP, and also we have a base model that we need to debias, and we combine their uh, prediction scores to generate the the final prediction scores, and then we uh, and then. Uh, we we have these prediction scores. Just combine uh, these three models, and we use uh, the BPR loss to change to change them. And also, we use the MSE loss in the prediction tasks. Uh, and how to uh, conduct the the uh, counterfactual inference to uh, adjust the effects of GP and PP? So here we uh, use two hyperparameters. So here uh, we have. Uh, Sorry, uh, we have gamma and beta here. The gamma and the beta are hyperparameters that we need to tune. And PUI is uh, the PP and uh, GI is uh, uh, GP here. So we use these two hyperparameters, gamma and beta, to tune their effects. And then uh, let me introduce the experiments. We uh, conduct our experiments on three data sets. And compare uh, and do it uh, on three base models, MF, NCF, and LIGCN, and we compare with ten uh, baseline methods. Uh, and in our experiments, we uh, aim to answer these three questions. First, is can PBAC outperform state of the art uh, devising methods? And the second uh, is how to how how do different key designs in our PBAC affect the accuracy? And the third is uh, does PBAC successfully mitigate the probability bias? So first, uh, let uh, we show that uh, in the uh, perform. The, the performance of our PBAC compared with the existing uh, baselines. And here we find that our PBAC consistently outperforms all uh, baselines across various uh, metrics, data sets, and base models. So this answers our uh, the re research question one. And uh, the other is uh, we. Uh, uh, we investigate the different components in the effects of different components in our PPAC. We so here we design three variants of PPAC. Uh, without CI means that we we don't use the 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 counterfactual inference. We 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 just set the gamma and beta that we introduced before at zero, so we don't use the 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 counterfactual inference. And without PP means that we remove the PP part in our uh, methodology design, and without GP uh, remove the GP part. And he, from this uh, table, we have three, uh, we have two observations. The first one is PPAC consistently uh, outperforms all the uh, variants, and without PP usually leads to worse performance compared with without GP. That that means actually our proposed PP is. Uh, our proposed uh, PP is more uh, useful, more effective than than GP. 
and the last uh, experiments, uh, we uh, conduct some case studies to see that whether our PPAC framework can uh, successfully uh, in, uh, reduce the recommendation frequency of popular items. And here, we divided the items in, uh, uh, into different groups based on their interactions, based on their popularity. And the x, x axis uh, is the, the, uh, the number of interactions of these items. So here, 50% uh, plus, actually, they are the most popular items group. And here we compare our PBAC with the uh, base models and MACR, which is a state of the art device method. And we find that uh, for our method, we can uh, reduce the recommendation frequencies of the most popular items uh, and increase the recommendations of uh, less popular items. So uh, this is uh, all my presentations. And uh, thank you for everyone.